Hello, I'm John Martinez and would like to talk about our recent experiment on quantum supremacy. Computers are important for the modern world in part because they continue to become more and more powerful over time, as described by Moore's law. However, physical limits are slowing down such advancements so that new computing ideas are being researched. Quantum computing is such a new technology which promises to solve certain problems exponentially faster than current computers. Billions of dollars and decades of research has been invested in quantum computing. The aim of the quantum supremacy experiment as Google was to explicitly demonstrate this speed up on at least one algorithm. In particular, the quantum computer took data for 200 seconds which then needed over a thousand years to check on a supercomputer, thus showing the computational power of quantum mechanics. Now, quantum mechanics was first developed to describe how atoms work. For example, take the hydrogen nucleus, which is a negatively charged electron, uh, electron circling a positive charge proton nucleus. Both particles attract each other and classically you would expect them to just stick together. This is not what happened, since quantum mechanics explains the electron forms a small cloud around the proton, where it was simultaneously at all parts around the nucleus at the same time. Physicists call this the superposition principle. Quantum explains why atoms have size, an important property of all the matter around us. The cloud is formed by a precise physical theory that can predict well the properties of atoms. Quantum computing abstracts the idea of superposition to information, which is fundamentally described by bits that are either zero or one. In a quantum computer, each quantum bit or qubit can be both zero and one at the same time in a quantum superposition. If a qubit can be at zero and one at the same time, then is it possible to compute the answer to zero and the answer to one simultaneously, just like a parallel computer. This gives a factor of two speed up, which is interesting, but not necessarily useful. It becomes useful, however, considering what happens to multiple qubits. For example, in two qubits, it simultaneously computes the answer for 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, now a factor of four of parallelism. This increase in parallel computing is double for each added qubit an exponential increase versus size. Thus, at 50 qubits, the parallelism is 2 to the 50th power, which then starts to compete with the supercomputer. At 300 qubits, 2 to the 300 is basically the number of atoms in the universe, which is clearly a size that is, gets to be interesting. It never do classically. We make our quantum computer using artificial atoms made out of superconducting electrical circuits. Here, the macroscopic currents and voltages in the circuit behave quantum mechanically. It's not obvious that nature allows quantum mechanics to work this way, so that was my PhD thesis in the mid-1980s to prove it. The interesting idea here is that you can build a complex quantum system, a quantum computer, using integrated circuit fabrication technology, just like that's used for building a computer chips. It has taken many people around the world for about 30 years to figure out exactly how to do this and to get this, the circuits to work well. For the quantum supremacy experiment, we built at Google a chip called Sycamore that had 53 qubits, where each qubit connected to each neighbor in a square grid. The big step here was to precisely control and calibrate each qubit so we knew exactly what it was doing. The quantum supremacy algorithm was essentially building a quantum random number generator, which had a quantum property similar to laser speckle, such that some num numbers are more likely than other numbers. So we measured these random numbers from a quantum computer and then checked with a quantum simulation on a supercomputer that the numbers we measured were actually the ones predicted. For 30 qubits, one can check with your laptop. At 40, you need a powerful workstation. At 50, you need a supercomputer or a Google data center. At the 53 we, we eventually measured, it would take thousands of years to do the check. Now, important science that was tested here 
is that the quantum computer worked just as predicted. We found no new physics that would prevent us from making even more powerful machines. That's really good news. So now that we've shown a quantum computer can be powerful, the next step is to show it can do something useful. For quantum algorithms, a big area of research is quantum artificial intelligence and quantum optimization, like solving the traveling salesman problem. Although this promise is to have huge commercial impact, useful algorithms have not yet been invented and clearly an active area of research. I like the research into quantum chemistry, which is actually what Richard Feynman first proposed in the 1980s. And now algorithms exist to solve such problems. Simplified versions are being run on quantum computers now and giving sensible results. It's a good test of the theory of what's going on. These algorithms can be thought of as running, let's say, 100 to 1,000 lines of code for, uh, uh, for practical applications. We're going to need larger machines, maybe in the millions or billions of lines of code. To do this, we need to reduce qubit errors by millions or billions, which requires quantum error correction. This is currently a frontier of research into making a quantum computer. It may take maybe a decade to figure that all out. The field of quantum computing is growing with billions of dollars of research funding now being planned. Although building a quantum computer is challenging, the quantum supremacy experiment has shown that quantum computers can be powerful, as promised, and it's the right time for investment to now make them useful. Okay, thank you very much.